<laughs> Hi, my name is Amanda Wick, and today we're going to be talking about popular culture in today's society. When I think of pop culture, there's two words that come to mind. One is fear, and the other is awareness. The fear that we've strayed too far from what God has wanted us to go to, and as our duty as Christians, um, we've accepted the fact that our society has changed. The second is awareness. We need to be aware of these changes. We need to be able to stop them. We need to be able to help them. And most of all, we just need to know and be aware of what's going on around us. It wasn't until I came to Arizona Christian University that pop culture was brought up. In our communication courses, that is the main topic that we are always talking about. How we can help pop culture, how we can hinder the ways that it's been going, and just overall, as Christians, what we should be doing to help the cause. So, many of you guys know who the Kardashian family is. It's a pop culture icon that many people spend time on. They read about them all the time on the news. They watch their shows. Um, they buy their clothing products. Basically, they worship them, which is something that we should never do. Before we go deep into popular culture, we need to understand what pop culture is exactly. So this is a definition about what pop culture is. It's our systems of meaning are always grounded into society, the social structure and economics of everyday life. Pop culture is what consumes our lives every single day. It's what we listen to when we're driving, it's what we watch when we turn on the television, it's what we look at when we're on our phone. Another great definition for pop culture would be cultural products such as music, art, literature, fashion, dance, film, cyber culture, television, and radio that are consumed by the majority of society's population. So in a sense, we're the people that make um, pop culture actually what it is. We make it become part of our culture. So when it comes to pop culture, there's actually two types. There's within pop culture. So there's pop culture and then there's high culture. High culture is pop culture, but within high classes. So that, that would be like the professional athletes, celebrities, high political campaigners, um, anything that is not your middle class. And a good definition to explain what high culture is would be product of past stages of society that is associated with ruling classes with the elites and that is accordingly being replaced in modern democratic conditions by a popular culture. So we see much of the high culture when we watch um, reality TV like um, The Housewives of Atlanta, those types of shows. So when it comes to pop culture, there are a few characteristics to make it unique. Our target market. Our target market is one of the main things that popular culture attacks. Geography. So the location varies, pop culture varies the different locations that you live in. Consumer access. That has to do with where you are location-wise and the access that you have to pop culture. If you were to go to um, somewhere where technology isn't advanced yet, let's say somewhere in Africa, they wouldn't have a TV to be able to consume pop culture through television shows or reality shows. So it depends of where you live, of the different pop culture that you can actually consume and access. And then diversity is another factor in youth. Youth is probably the main characteristic when it comes to pop culture because that's our future generation that is being consumed fully in popular culture. So a lot of the different um, characteristics come from the youth because the youth are the people that buy in time, spend their money on it, and basically live by it to make it their own culture. The major forms of pop culture music. So when it comes to rap versus worship, 
more people listen to rap music, especially kids my age, around the age of 21. Um, that's all you hear when you go out with friends or when you're in the car riding with friends. Television shows. Veggie Tales versus Dora the Explorer. It all depends on what you decide to watch. So say um, if you're growing up and you have little kids and instead of watching a Christian um, channel like Veggie Tales that give stories that come from the Bible, you would let them watch Nickelodeon which is Dora the Explorer which basically talks about life lessons, not really goes deep into like any biblical standpoints. And then movies, like The Passion versus The Avengers. It's, you can see in the box office how popular The Avengers was and how popular The Passion was. That just gives you um, a good point of view of how society reacts to things that has to do with the Christian lifestyle versus pop culture. So one of the main things when it comes to pop culture is social media. Social media has shaped this generation and has become a huge problem when we think about popular culture. So we have Instagram, we have Twitter, Facebook, and Snapchat. Much of the identity is formed through these apps. A lot of people act like there's someone behind the camera, behind the screen, to show that they fit in with pop culture, that they're accepted. And a lot of times these um, create problems because we try to be someone that we're not, even if it's someone who we don't even want to be. And that's the problem with popular culture is that that's accepted. You're accepted through the amount of likes that you get, for the amount of shares that you get, for the amount of Snapchats you receive daily. So social media is a big factor when it comes to um, dealing with popular culture. As a communication major, we have been taught the different ways that we can help with pop culture. And the way that society is going right now, I think that is our job and our duty from God to help those around us and to lead it in a way that would help others instead of hinder. So I believe that God has a path for every single one of us. We need to adapt to change and we need to be able to handle rejection. In today's society, that is one thing that we are scared of. We're scared of being rejected from how people want to accept us or how they view us. And we just need to know that God has a plan for us and through popular culture, we can change the different ways. And I just want everyone to remember Romans 12, 2. It says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. We can use that in our everyday life when we have to deal with pop culture. Thank you for watching my TED Talk.